Welcome to Gibbs Field Farms. And uh, this field here is our experimental field. So what we have off to my left is a two and a half, two and a quarter ish square field. Uh, this field borders our pasture. So we typically always run livestock on this in the fall or through the winter. Uh, every year we do something different with it. Um, so this year we have 60 inch corn on it and we made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. All in all, considering how dry we are, the corn looks pretty good, all things considered. It's still gonna yield a crop. Definitely not gonna be super profitable, but I think we can gain it back on the grazing side of it by running the cattle out here. Um, 60 inch wide corn, what is that? Well, we got a 30 inch wide planter, so we shut off every other row and we plant corn and we double the population. This field was planted at 25,000 plants per acre. So we had to double them ears up or the kernels up per row. So we got 50,000 plants versus uh, 25,000 every 30 inch. So what we did on our in-between rows, in between the corn, we got soybeans. So it's corn, soybeans, corn, soybeans. Two and a half acre, two and a quarter ish acres that we tried that on. And then we're gonna put cover crop out uh, to grow in between there as well with the soybeans. First problem we fought was compaction. This was uh, some pasture mix after corn last year and um, we ran the cattle on it this spring and it got dry, dry, dry. We rotational grazed them so they wouldn't turn it into a mud hole and the cattle just beat it down even though we were trying to be stewards of the land and not get it compacted, it was our issue. And then it never rained and it never rained and we got very little rain when we did get it. So we planted this into heavy compaction. We fought some weeds. Um, we finally did get ahead of the weeds with some herbicide, but by the time we got the cover crop down to help as it was our weed suppression, the weeds were coming back again. So when you look at this field, kind of look at, we'll come over, let's kind of watch. Look through it, it's real wide rows. We got a lot of water hemp and weeds growing up in it, a little bit of foxtail. Um, but you also see there's some rows where it turned out pretty good where the soybeans are actually coming pretty good. So we're not gonna harvest these, we're gonna graze this. We're gonna harvest the corn with a corn head, but the soybeans are just gonna be for the cattle to eat. So once we get in there, we'll kind of look at it. Originally, I thought that this corn was going to be a complete failure, maybe 50 bushel per acre. After walking through it, I think it's going to go 150, maybe. So it's going to be interesting. We'll see once the combine rolls, but we're actually getting some ears out here. Uh, we got 10.9 inches of rainfall. Typically by now, we are at a solid 25 to 30 inches by now. Uh, our annual rainfall in this area is, I believe, 32 or 36 inches a year. So we are way behind on rainfall. Dry, dry, dry. We are going to come in after we harvest this, put a fence up, run the cattle out here, let them clean it off. And then we're going to come in next spring and we're going to try to fix this field. We are going to have to probably use a subsoiler uh, just to break up that hard pan and maybe do a little bit of tillage on this field. Uh, just to get it back into shape. And then from there, we're going to have to do better management of it. Anyways, come on in. We'll show you our good and our bad and our ugly. The soybeans in general, even though we've got a lot of weeds here, the soybeans are coming up in the row. So I'll just yank this plant out and kind of see it here. I'm going to pull it out. Here's our soybean plant which actually does not look too terribly bad. By the way, we had cattle running on this ground. The only fertilizer that this field has seen, we put down a little bit of pelletized gypsum, which is calcium sulfur. We got the cattle manure. And then with the planter, we put on roughly 45 pounds of nitrogen with sulfur, boron, zinc, humic acid, and molasses. And then we run biological inferro, which is our worm uh, poop, our worm extract, uh, the muddy water that we've made in previous videos, um, in furrow on the seeds. So no salt or nothing in seed to hinder the, the seed germination, but this will be cattle chow. Cows will eat this up or the, the feeder calves will eat this up. Protein. Soybeans have a lot of protein in them. So that's not a weed. That's soybeans, but we got water hemp growing in here like crazy. And, uh, the, my biggest concern is we're going to be fighting weeds pretty hard next year. 
on this field, but we're going to have to do something to fix it. Anyways, 60 inch trout, I firm believer in doing testing on your farm. We like to do it on this two and a half acre field every year because it kind of gives us a, an idea of what's going on. So all in all, the corn plant, we got some bottom leaves flaring up. Typical nitrogen deficiency, We're really dry. But when you look across all of it, the ears are really not that bad. Um, considering they're doubled up, you know, they're not too bad of sized ears. So I'm just going to try to pull a non-biased ear here that I feel is a typical size ear. We've got some bigger ones. Like you look here, that's a big ear. This is a smaller ear. This ear is really big. This ear is definitely smaller. This ear, probably a medium sized ear like what I got. So I'm trying to be as honest with myself and with anybody watching this as I can because I hate getting my hopes up that, oh my God, we got this awesome crop. And I don't want to be the opposite where I pull a small ear and be like, this is an absolute failure. So let's try to be, uh, I, I like to be optimistic, but yet, you know, let's learn from this. Pull this back. This is a, I'm not 100% sure. I want to say this is a, 99 day corn, 99 relative maturity. I'm not 100% sure. I'm going to have to go back and look at that. But here's what we got for an ear. Uh, it's just starting to dent, which means uh, it's getting close to its uh, cycle, life cycle, and it's starting to, uh, you know, stop growing. Uh, I like to count kernels around. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 16 rows around. I'm going to guess before I count, probably 32 long. So we are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40. You could maybe call it 41. 16 by 40, let's just say round. 16 round, 40 long. On a 25,000 population. I'm five foot seven on a good day. I'm going to say we got probably seven and a half, eight foot tall corn. Um, this field looked really, really tough early in the season. But to be honest with you, I still think it's going to make a decent crop. I'm going to pull a second ear. Try and, like I said, try and not be biased here. But, you know, what do we got? Should give us a decent idea. I'm going to say that's very similar in size. So I am going to say this is not a crop failure. I think we've got 150 possibly bushel yield ability out here. Maybe. Now, a lot of it depends on if we get a little bit more moisture. Like I said, some of these kernels are denting, but a lot of them are not. So that means we're still filling out. The amount of kernels on the cob does not really justify the yield. It is how big are the kernels, how dense are the kernels, how, hev how heavy are the kernels. So you can have a 14 round by 36 long, but they're big kernels. They're nutrient dense, they're heavy, they take up a lot of space. That's gonna yield better than a small little popcorn seed that's a million seeds, you know, because you got bigger health, heavier seeds. So I think we got some potential here. We are learning, so I know what mistakes we made on this field. We're not going to make them mistakes again. One thing we can't control is the rainfall, and we did not get much rain on this, but all in all, it looks pretty decent. I'm not going to give up hope on it. About June, I kind of gave up hope on it, but it really came around, and it looks better than I thought it was going to, so I think we might make crop out of it. The cattle are going to be happy. They're going to graze this off, maybe smash down these weeds. And uh, we're going to come in with some tillage on this field. I don't like to do tillage, but we're going to have to do some tillage to break up that hard pan and recycle, uh, get our soils breathing and going again. And, um, you know, get a cover crop out of here to maybe help suppress some weeds. And uh, I don't know what our experiment will be next year, but we are going to do something different. So this is our experimental field. Two and a half acres, 60 inch wide corn, cover crop seed we seeded. None of it obviously grew or I'd be pointing it out to you, but hey, we tried. And um, 
this is our test and we're doing. So every year we'd like to try something different. This is our test. So hit like, hit subscribe, keep following us, and we'll give you the results of what we got going on with our 60-inch corn. We are just a few days away from picking this 60-inch uh, wide corn. Experimental field, two and a half acres. Uh, the weeds kind of took over our cover crop mix. We do have some soybeans coming in. Um, I step down so at least the cattle can eat them along with the corn stalks and stuff. Other than that, our cover crop really didn't come up very well, but the corn doesn't look too terribly bad. Uh, we got some smaller ears here. Then you come over and you got some bigger ears. Then you got some smaller ears. Kind of a little bit of variety of everything there. Um, most of them are like 16 by 36. Um, we got uh, 25,000 population. Same way with this side, we got some really nice ears. And then, you know, you got a nice ear and then you got these stub ones that are pretty little, they ain't gonna amount to much if anything. But, you know, I'm hoping for early estimates, I would say maybe 150, maybe 170. I don't know, maybe I'll be surprised. There's some spots in the field that do look better than this and there's some spots that don't look this nice. So. We will see, we'll be combining this in probably two days. So I guess we will see when time tells here in a couple days how it does. And we'll get the cattle out here to let them chew up whatever they can find.